Tada! <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brent Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, welcome back to Legend 7 Random Pokemon Battles. I've got an Aeromitis against his Butterfree, which, um, yeah, not sure what I can do against it, really. Aeromitis has more of a defensive moveset, so I go ahead and send in the Garbodor. I'm going to uh, try and break his substitute with a Gunk Shot. But if this thing has Psychic, then my day is going to be absolutely fucked. He goes for Quiver Dance now, just setting up some moves. I think he might have the Psychic, why else would he set up in my face? Um, but he could set up another substitute. Instead he goes for Air Slash, showing that he does not have the Psychic. So I'm gonna get a free Gunk Shot on that thing. No Poison, unfortunately, which would have uh, knocked this thing out. Oh no, he has Leftovers. Wouldn't have knocked him out, but he would have been close. Uh, Air Slash, again, on my Gorbador is not going to be enough, and I'm able to take that thing down with yet another Gunk Shot. Super, super job from the big bag of trash Pokemon. <laughs> I, uh, could set up some entry hazards with this guy, but I'm, yeah, he seems to be doing pretty well with the offense, so, uh, I just leave him in here, unfortunately, to die to a Thunderbolt. He didn't have that much health left. Um, now is a good time to go into my Aromatisse because he's got the Gudra out and I got uh, my one attacking move which is Dazzling Gleam. Unfortunately he does paralyze me with the uh, Thunderbolt but that's not going to matter too much because Aromatisse is really really slow anyways. If I do lose a turn from the paralyzation then it'll, it'll be a bit of a pisser. <clears throat> so he's scared of my Dazzling Gleam. And uh, he switches the Gudra out and brings in another Gen 7 Poke, a Rockwinid, which is a bug and water type. And uh, it's able to weather my Dazzling Gleam relatively well. Like I said, this thing is a, a defensive variant from what I can tell. <clears throat> Leech Life had a huge fucking boost in Gen 7. I think it does like 65 uh, damage now, 65 power or something like that, which is really, really good. Uh, we're just gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe now. I thought he was gonna go for Leech Life again. He goes for Liquidation, which is, uh, really not a nice thing. I go for the Wish now, and don't really have anybody to pass it to. Nobody's taking damage yet. So, uh, if he takes me down, then he takes me down. Luckily, my Protect is here, so I do get the Wish. Um, but yeah, I don't know how long this thing is gonna last especially since he's getting that uh, leftovers healing as well. So every turn that I'm not attacking, he's just healing up a little more. There's the paralyzation. God damn it. Of course it's going to matter. He used the mirror coat, which was a really, really good move, especially if I was going to go for Dazzling Gleam again, which I was. But now he's revealed that he has it, so uh, I'm going to pull my special attacker out of there because mirror coat only works on special attacks. And I got a Drudagon, which is actually a shiny one which is like 1 in 2,500 chance or some shit like that. So we are quite blessed today to have seen this. Oh yes. Um, he goes for the liquidation again, which I resist, and uh, I go for a substitute as he puts up his, his toxic, and my substitute's gonna go ahead and block that, which is super awesome. Great move on my part. Nice thinking, Dayton. And uh, Outrage is gonna take this thing down in just a couple of turns. He is gonna break my substitute. Oh no. Leech Life doesn't have quite enough power to break my substitute, but he is uh, healing back up just a smidge. It's going to be close as far as the KO from the Outrage, and not quite. 5% <laughs> health, that's, that's really sad. So okay, we're not going to get a free substitute for the next Pokemon that comes in, but that's okay. I do get the uh, third turn of Outrage, which is going to take this thing down for sure. Unfortunately, I'm going to be confused now. Um, which usually I would switch out on. If he brings in the Gudra, then I'll probably go back into Aromatisse, but if he's smart, he won't do that, because Gudra's slow. Okay, he does do that. So, um, here we go. Drudagon, come on back. Aromatisse, get on out. And, uh, I don't think this thing's gonna be able to do much. I'm immune to his Draco Meteor. So that is the one same type, attack, same type attack that Gudra has. He is only a dragon type, and uh, he's scared. He's scared of this Aromatisse, like he should be. This thing has been doing some fucking work for being such an ugly bag of trash. We had two bag of trash Pokemons, Aromatisse and Garbodor. So uh, I go ahead and get a wish going, 
as that Raticate goes for a sword stance. His burn orb activates, which is really, really fucking scary. Um, Moonblast is going to take it down below half health, but I think this thing is going to fuck me up with a facade, so we will wave goodbye to Aromatisse. Nice to know ya. See you later. Oh, this thing is fucking scary. I definitely need something that's faster, which isn't necessarily hard to find. I think Raticate only has like 90 or 95 base speed. Ninetales is definitely faster, but he goes for the Sucker Punch, which with the Sword Stance and the Guts Boost is really, really hurty. Uh, so after Life Orb damage and that giant Sucker Punch, my Ninetales is down to 32% HP. We're not going to be seeing much of Ninetales in this match, I can tell you that much right now. So Gudra comes out, goes for the Sludge Bomb. Um, I just go for Hidden Power Ice, which I do have. I also have Solar Beam, but meh. Hidden Power Ice does a tiny little bit of damage because of its low, low base power. And uh, I send in the Crawdont next. I think Gudra might be a little bit faster than um, Drudagon. But although Drudagon could take that thing down with an Outrage, that I know the Gudra also has Draco Meteor. So I go ahead and set up a Dragon Dance with my Crawdont, and I'm going to use the knockoff, which is able to take down the Gudra, but unfortunately I did get poisoned from a Sludge Bomb, and uh, my Life Orb damage is going to kill me. So another double KO, so sad to see that. Ah, and I don't know what Pokemon he's going to send out next, he's kept it a good mystery. Holy shit, it's a Lugia! Okay, so uh, my Dredagon's gonna come out here and try and do some stuff. I suppose I'll go for uh, Toxic or something like that, but he sets up the Substitute, which is not good at all. I go for Gunk Shot, which is probably a better move, <laughs> all things considered. So, breaking the Substitute right away, I'm, I'm glad I did that. He goes for Toxic now, which uh, is probably not gonna matter so much, because I'm just gonna go balls to the wall and do as much damage to this thing as I can. I would really like to see it off the field as quick as possible. Um, it might have Roost or something fucked up like that. Luckily he does miss his Aero Blast. Um, Lugia's special move or whatever. And that Outrage does some pretty pretty good damage. I'm expecting him to Roost now if he has it, but if he doesn't then I might be able to KO him with uh, my second Outrage. He goes for the Aero Blast, which does some pretty decent damage, but Outrage is able to take that thing down. Now I am toxic and confused with my Drudagon, but um, I think whatever he sends out, as long as it isn't like a Fairy type or a Seal type, I'm gonna leave my Drudagon in. Ooh, it's a Zekrom. So yeah, if I can hit that thing with Dragon or Outrage, yeah, <laughs> if I could. But I don't, because he goes for Dragon Claw, and it's a legendary compared to my regular ass Pokemon. It is faster. Um, so now Tapu Lili's in here, Psychic and Fairy, able to get that thing with a Moon Blast, no problem, with the Life Orb damage. Nice Pokemon that he saved for last, but not enough to overcome my team of uh, just little guys. Awesome. I, really great work. Ah, <sighs> good fight, Jamaican Blaze. Let's see who's the next battle. Alright, hopefully this battle is going to be equally as awesome. It is against a fellow named Maxo Marvin. I got a Wobbuffet out against his Shuckle, uh, but they're both really defensive Pokemon, so I'm going to switch out into my Slowbro right off the bat as he sets up a Sticky Web. I fucking hate Sticky Web, uh, especially if you're trying to sweep with a faster base team. If your team is bulky, it doesn't matter as much. Uh, I think my team is pretty bulky, so... Yeah, I'll live with it. Stealth Rock as I go for the Calm Mind, which uh, is not helpful. I'm able to knock it down pretty well with a Skull, but even with the uh, same type attack and plus one and being super effective, I'm not able to knock that Shuckle out. That thing is just fucking scary. He Encores to try and lock me into Calm Mind, but it's too late. Now I've got the Skull going, and he brings in his Crawdont, so I'm going to stay in here. And I'm going to go ahead and try and fish for the burn on Crawdont, which will cripple him significantly. And it does some pretty decent damage because Crawdont's special defense is shite. Um, however, his knockoff is doing some pretty good damage to my Slowbro as well. And it will keep doing the same amount of damage because I don't have uh, an item that is able to be knocked off. So. If, if knockoff does more damage if you are holding an item and Slowbro can't let go of his item, 
Doesn't matter. We're able to scald and knock off each other, and uh, he ends up going down to his life orb damage. Life orb, it's not the greatest item. I rarely, rarely use it. Um, it just decreases your survivability so much, I don't think it's worth it. Anyways, I go into the Manti now, and I'm able to get rid of the Stealth Rocks and the Sticky Web with Defog, which is really, really nice. That Shuffle is back out, going for Infestation, and uh, that doesn't let me switch, which I guess doesn't really matter. I know he's going to try and set up some more Entry Hazards, so I go ahead and just blast that thing with a Skull. And now, no more Entry Hazards on the field. Ta-da! He's got a Zip Strike out here now, but I have an Emolga which um, should get the motor drive boost if he goes for the electric move. Although I don't really have anything that I'm able to hit the Zeb Striker with. It's basically only in here so he doesn't uh, end up destroying my Mantine, which I might want because I don't know what else he has necessarily. Zeb Striker and the Overheat. Yeah, I really like that uh, special attack drop from the Overheat. It will come into play in this fight, I guarantee. He's got the Doug Trio. Oh, Alola Doug, Doug Trio now. So this is a ground and steel type, which is really, really interesting. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a joke. I was like, Doug Trio has hair now? What the fuck is happening? Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what he's gonna do. I go ahead and go for the Roost and check out his Iron Head, which uh, breaks my substitute, but I'm not sure exactly how much damage it's gonna do to a Molga since it is resisted. It does some pretty good damage. That was a critical hit, um, but yeah, it broke the sub, so it's gonna do at least 25 damage. And I don't have enough, I don't really have anything to hit him again. Amolga has mostly uh, steel or electric type attacks. So I send in my Mantine now, which is gonna be able to resist the Iron Head extremely well as well. Um, and he's still encored into it, so I think he's gonna switch into the Zeb Striker now. So we are setting up a little pattern here. He's going to think that I'm going to switch into the Emolga, so I think he's going to go for the Overheat. So I'm going to make a bold play now and uh, just leave my Mantine in and go for Scald one more time, trying to get some more damage on the Zeb Striker. And he plays right into my, my greedy little hands. Look at that. <laughs> so he's dropped his special attack now. I do get the burn from the Scald. Oh, everything's coming up Dayton. Yeah. Um, so now I'm gonna switch into the Emolga because I think he is gonna go for the electric type of tap. We're just playing some mind games with him right now. Uh, you know, we've got him we've got him on the hook. So now we're just gonna just gonna play with him until he's tired, and then we'll reel him in. It's just like fishing. Big bass fishing. Maxo Marvin fishing. So he switches out, I'm gonna get the Doug Trio going again. I didn't switch out because I really want my Emolga to be able to do something. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just not gonna happen. Roost substitute Thunderbolt Charge Beam. Wow, what a move set. So <laughs> I go ahead and set up the substitute now to see what he's gonna lock himself into. He's still doing that Iron Head shit. So uh, I think if I could encore him, he's gonna switch back into the Zeb Striker. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I expected him to switch predicting the Encore, but he he seems pretty uh, pretty forward about his, his choice of action. So he just keeps on doing that Iron Head. I'm not going to bother with the Encore, I'm just going to go straight back into the Mantine because I'm not scared of the Iron Head. Um, I'm not sure, is he Choice Banded or something like that? That would make a lot of sense for a Doug Trio. But yeah, uh, Mantine is going to probably scare this thing out. It doesn't. He keeps going for Iron Head. I, I'm at a loss. Oh my god, my Mantine flinched. We might be in some trouble. Hmm, better get some Roost going. He, he Iron Heads me again, hopefully no flinch. Just, okay. I was gonna say, flinch hacks all day. I, I've not been having any luck with this shit. <sighs> all right, we are able to get the Roost up. Now is he scared out? No, my god. This, this fellow is just really ballsy. Either really dumb or really, really ballsy. <laughs> so he's, he's just gonna keep going for it. I gotta do what I gotta do and get this Scald going. But uh, I keep getting flinched. See, look at that shit. I'm gonna end up having to roost again. So we are at a bit of a standstill in this fight. I know I'm gonna turn it around my way eventually. Uh, we have five Pokemon, he has only four. 
and finally I'm able to get a scald off. Um, and I think I'll have enough to, to roost after his iron head. He has to be choice banded or choice scarf. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I could roost, but yeah, I go for the skull. Just get this thing the fuck out of here. And uh, he's probably going to go back into the Zeb Striker. Mmm. Oh, well. I do have a Wobble Foot sitting in the back. Ooh. Instead of Zeb Striker, he goes into Conkledur, which is an interesting play. I do have the Air Slash to hit that thing super effectively. And uh, the knockoff is going to finish my Mantine. But he also reveals that he has Life Orb, so he's at 36% after my Mantine's Air Slash and his Life Orb damage, which is really, really awesome. Wobbuffoot's in here now. He's either going to try and punch me or, yep, stat up. Okay, so I went for a counter the first time. I'm going to go ahead and uh, Encore the next turn. Yeah, he does bulk up again, not wanting to hit my Wobbuffoot. So I'm going to go ahead and Encore him into that. And then I can do as I please with him. I don't have to worry about leftovers stacking up or anything like that. It's going to be a real good thing. going to have a great time. So he's just out here bulking up. Uh, he can't do anything else. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Emolga now. I don't think he has a Stone Edge or anything like that. I'm seeing less and less Stone Edge on Conkledurs these days. Uh, but we'll never find out. <laughs> All he did was bulk up and then he died. That's so sad when that happens. But uh, good for me, good for me, good for me. So his last Pokemon is a Nido Queen. I, again, I don't have anything to hit the ground type. Amolga's basically useless in this fight now. Uh, so I should have sacrificed him a bit earlier, maybe against the Crawdon, but that's okay. That's just fine. I saved up my uh, big bulky Chansey for just this sort of occasion. And uh, Chansey's gonna be able to seismic toss this Nido Queen to death. Uh, he's setting up Toxic Spikes going for Sludge Wave, none of that's really gonna affect the big wall. The wall of walls. So, um, yeah. I don't feel like doing Wish or Soft Boiled or any of that type of shit. Um, there's not much point this late in the battle. I don't really want to body bag him so much. Well, it's not a body bag because I lost two pokes. But, um, yeah. Not so much point in, in making the the defeat any worse than it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he brings in the Zeb Strike now. It's burned. It's crippled as shit. This game is just about over. I bring in the Leafy on now just to get him to go for the uh, overheat because I know that's going to drop his special attack and I do resist his hidden power or whatever that is. Hmm. Interesting. Water maybe? What the fuck? <laughs> um, probably ground. But yeah, he goes for the overheat. Plays right into my greedy hands once more, and uh, burn is basically going to be enough to take this guy out. So friends, I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. And if you do, friends, I'll send you a face mask so you, you don't get sick. Especially sick of my content, which, you know, is known to happen from time to time. Anyways, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Zeb Striker goes down to a burn. Look at that. Another fantastic battle. Hooray. I'll see you next week with the, the same sort of stuff. And I, I hope that you'll let me know if you're enjoying it. Anyways, friends, I'll see you then. And until then, bye-bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, 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 see you, my friends.